Hi, Otto here for Bavarian Autosport. Today, we're going to be showing you the various inspection points that you'll want to be going over with your BMW or Mini in the spring, getting the car ready for a summer's worth of driving, or after a winter storage or a long, hard winter's drive. We'll be going under the hood, as well as under the vehicle, inspecting various suspension and chassis points. Now remember as we go along, if you like this video, please hit your like button. Send us comments, and remember everything you see and that we talk about here today, you can find more at bavauto.com. That's B-A-V-A-U-T-O dot com. Let's go ahead and get to this. All right, here we are under the hood of our 330i. This is a 2003 model. We're going to be looking at the various areas that we want to inspect to help determine our change intervals, as well as regular maintenance and the condition of various items under the hood, see if we need to do any further service. Now the first thing we're going to look at is the microfilter. On this model, it's right in the middle at the base of the windshield. This is quite common for many BMW models. Some will have the microfilters over in this area and the same area on the passenger side. See our various DIYs at our blog site at blog.bavauto.com and we'll show you various videos on the different models on how to remove the microfilter. This particular one, we have quarter turn fasteners. We have three of them, two, and the third one over there is already released. We pull this cover up, pull the filter out, and we'll inspect it. This is a new filter, so it looks in great shape, obviously. This side would be all dirty and full of debris if it hadn't been changed recently. We recommend you change it either when you find it is dirty, obviously dirty, or once a year. We'll put this right back in. Close the cover, push the fasteners down, quarter turn, find the hole here, and we're all set. We'll leave that one undone for now. The next item we will look at is the brake fluid. This is our reservoir. It will almost in all cases be in this general location. Sometimes on late models there will be a plastic cover over this area. We'll open the cap, and we want to look at the fluid condition. We'll pull the level sensor out. This is the level sensor turns on your warning light if the fluid gets low. We'll pull it out and drip some fluid on our rag here. This is fresh fluid. This vehicle's just been flushed. This bright, clear yellow color is what the fluid should look like. If the fluid is more opaque or dark in color, it should be changed. You should plan a brake fluid flush. We also have a DIY video on that, again, at the blog site. We'll put the cap on, and on the side here, there's marks for minimum and maximum. This one is right up to the maximum. You can see the fluid through the translucent bottle, and we can see the fluid is right where it should be. That's okay. We'll move on to the next point. Let's look at the oil. This is our dipstick. We're going to pull this out. And again, as with the brake fluid, we're going to put some on our rag. This oil is also freshly changed. You can see it's a nice honey color. It's very translucent. You can see through the oil on the dipstick to see the dipstick. If this oil were dark and we could not see through it to see the dipstick behind through the uh, what is now a honey color, but if it's brown and black and we can't see through it, it's time for an oil change and we would want to change our oil change interval to a shorter period than whatever the oil that's in it has been run. Now the next item we'll look at is the power steering fluid. The reservoir is here. There's a dipstick on the end of the cap. And similar to the others, we'll look at the fluid. Now, 
This fluid is not dark, but it isn't bright red. This fluid actually should be changed. Now, we'll find some that look like motor oil, and they definitely should be changed. But this fluid in this model, this says here, ATF only on the cap. That means this is Dexron 3 automatic transmission fluid. That fluid is a bright red clear color. This fluid is no longer red and should be changed. You'll also notice I'm having a problem pulling much fluid out of there. The dipstick is marked. This is the full mark. This is the add mark. And that's with the engine running. And way down here is where I'm touching the fluid. So this actually is low on fluid as well. When we start the engine, that, that'll go down a little bit more too. So it's, it's pretty low. This needs more fluid, as well as a change. When we change that, we would change the bottle. There's a filter in the bottom. In order to change the filter, you change the whole bottle. Again, at the blog site, we have a DIY video on doing just that. OK, now in keeping with checking the fluids, we're going to check our coolant. This is the coolant reservoir cap, or you might say antifreeze. We'll pull the cap. Just take a look at it, see what condition it's in. There's some grease on this uh, for the O-rings. That is not a necessity, but uh, apparently at one point there was just some light grease put on this. That's okay. Now, our dipstick too, we have a floating dipstick. This should be popping up out of here. If it's level with the neck, that's okay or higher. It comes up about an inch in total when it's totally full. I can see it in there. It's about this far down. So this is actually about uh, that about a quart low in the end with it being that far down. I can still push it down just a little bit, which means it's not bottomed out. But it definitely is low. I don't think I can pull it out. So you can, there we go. That's what it looks like. This would be a full position as long as it's from the top to here, that's okay. Again, this one is down quite a bit, so this is about a quart low. It's low enough that we can't even look and see what the condition of the coolant is. It's well below the neck, which is another thing we would want to do. We want to pull out and see nice, bright coolant, bright and clear, either blue, green, yellow, depending on what kind of coolant is in it. The BMW coolant is blue. So we'll put that back on. Note that we need to add coolant and also, once we add it and run it, check what the condition looks like. Okay, now we're going to check our air filter. On this model, it's housed right under this cover. Some models may have the air filter on the other side, and some may actually have two air filters. This particular model, this cover pulls off and the filter is laying flat underneath. Various other models, the filter may be horizontal or in other positions. Some even have trays that just pull right out. Very easy to get to. The Bentley repair manual for each model will discuss the exact air filter uh, removal process. Now this one has clips around the perimeter. We'll pull this clip. This one. One down here. And one right back here. And finally, one more right here. Okay, and here's our air filter right here. We can just lift it out, take a look. This again is a new air filter. So this has the pre-filter is nice and clean. If this is dirty looking or there's no pre-filter and the filter material is dirty looking, it should be replaced. Again, once a year otherwise. The new one just inserts in. Make sure the perimeter is seated properly. And we just put the cover back down. Hook up the snorkel and seat the cover. And then we work our spring clips and we're all set with the air filter. Now while we're on this side over here, let's also talk about inspecting our upper strut mounts. Now on the camera you can't see this, but when you look at your vehicle, there's a rubber section with a center cap. The center cap covers the top of the shock and the nut. The rubber that's through here is the rubber isolation for the actual shock mount. 
just take a look at it and see if there's any cracking in the rubber. If there's any cracking in the rubber, those should be replaced. Finally, in relationship to the coolant, we noted this coolant is low. We want to just take a general look around through behind the radiator and the front of the engine area, see if we see any white stains from dried coolant. That may help us find out why the coolant level is low. Let's go ahead and walk over to the other side and we have a couple more points to look at. Now over on the other side, let's continue just a little bit with our cooling system. We're going to check the water pump for bearing looseness. Now with this particular application, a 330i with a manual transmission, there is no engine driven cooling fan. We only have an electric fan right behind the radiator. So normally what we would do with an engine driven fan is grab the fan blades and wobble forward and backward and see if we have play. If there is any play, we'll look closely and see if that play is in the water pump clutch. Is it just the fan that's moving? Or is the water pump pulley behind the fan also moving with any movement you may find? If only the fan is moving, the pulley is not moving, the clutch is bad. If, however, the pulley is moving with the fan, then our water pump bearings are getting loose and we should plan on doing a water pump before it comes apart on us. And if there's no movement, everything's okay. While we're there, we'll take a quick look at the drive belt and just make sure there's no obvious big cracks in it. Further over here, this is our washer fluid reservoir. Obviously, that's something we'll check all the time. We can see our level is nice on that. Now, while we're under the hood, just take a general inspection all around. Look around the valve cover, around the front of the engine, around the side here, looking for evidence of oil leakage. Common leakage points on this engine would be the valve cover gasket and down along the bottom here, the crankcase ventilation hose cracking, and the oil filter housing down below where it attaches to the engine block can leak, getting the bottom of the engine block wet. Otherwise, just look for general areas of leakage or anything that might be of question for you to follow up later on. That's our under hood. Let's get under the car and see what we look like under there.